Okay, so we're still doing module one, but um, we're going to continue with the next example, module 31, of finding all zeros where some of them may be irrational. Okay, so let's take the possible rational zeros theorem. So factors of seven constant over factors of the leading coefficient, which is three, and then all the combinations. So one over one. 1 over 3, 7 over 1, and 7 over 3. And then we can write these as whole numbers, so just a big fat 1 and a big fat 7. And then remember you have all the possible sign combinations that can come with these numbers. And then to find the first one, we just start using the remainder theorem. We'll try the whole numbers first, and then we'll move on to the fractions if we have to. So 3x to the third plus x squared minus 17x minus 7. So I get negative 20. I get 8. I get 9.52. I get negative 868, so we do have to plug in the fractions. So 1 over 3, not 0. I went too far not zero again so try seven thirds and then negative seven thirds it's got to be one of these guys oops i did it twice but that's okay so it should be negative seven over three but let's double check just to make sure yep that's the guy okay so we're going to go ahead and put negative 7 thirds outside the synthetic division. We have 3, positive 1, negative 17, negative 7. So I get negative 7, I get negative 6, and multiply those, I'm going to get a positive 14, negative 3, positive 7, and 0. Again, if you need help with the multiplying, you can always use your calculator, right? So here are my A, B, and C. Let me double check my square root of 72, yeah. So, 1 plus or minus square root of 2 again. Coincident. So I get negative 7 thirds is 1, 0, and then 1 plus square root of 2, and 1 minus square root of 2. And I should only have three zeros, right? That's my highest exponent. And I do have all three zeros process does not change even though the kind of answers that I'm going to have does. Okay, So everything is still exactly the same. If I don't have a starting point, you can use your possible rational zeros theorem to figure out your starting point. So let's go ahead and look at this problem. Okay, so the factors of 6 are 1 and 6, 2 and 3. Factors of 7 are 1 and 7. 
1 over 1 is 1, 1 over 7, 6 over 1 is 6, 6 over 7, 2 over 1 is 2, 2 over 7, 3 over 1 is 3, and then 3 over 7. And again, all sign variations of each one of these numbers. So I'm going to do again, I like to do the whole numbers first. when I do the remainder theorem. And I don't know how far I'm gonna have to go. I'm just rewriting all the whole numbers first. And then if I have to, I'll do all the fractions. So one stores X, clear. And then seven X to the fourth, minus nine X to the third, minus 39 X squared, plus 11 X minus six. Plug in negative 1, we get negative 40. Plug in 6, we get 5, 7, 8, 4. It really doesn't matter what number, we just know it's not 0. Um, 2. Negative 2. Haha, ha, finally got one. So negative 2 is the guy that will give us a remainder of 0. So 7, negative 9, negative 39, positive 11, and negative 6. We get um, 7, you bring it down, you get negative 14, you multiply, you get positive 46. We get positive 7, we get negative 14, negative 3, positive 6, and we get 0. Now there's too many digits here to do the um, A, B, and C, which means we actually have to find another 0 to shrink this down so that this will give me my remainder and I'll just have the A, B, and C. So even though we were following the same process, because my exponent is 4, this time, I'm going to have to find a second one that works. So we stopped at negative 2, but we actually can't. We have to keep going and find a second one. Aha, and it's 3. So now we're going to use 3 here in the synthetic division and see what we get. And then finally, we have our A, B, and C for the um, synthetic division, right? So let's do our synthetic division. the negative will come out as an I. So a two came out, but so does an I because of the negative. And then the six is still inside. So we get two over 14 plus or minus two I squared is six over 14. This reduces to one seventh. This also reduces to one seventh, but the one is invisible there. So we have to have four answers here. And our four answers are negative 2, 3, 1 over 7, plus i squared is 6 over 7, and 1 over 7 minus i squared is 6 over 7. Now they could be picky here on how they want you to write your complex numbers. Usually they write, like us to write our complex numbers in that a plus bi form. So to do that, you would have the real number here, you would have the imaginary coefficient, and then the i on the side. Same thing for the other one, 
and then just put the eye on the side. So instead of putting the eye in front of the square root, put it to the side of that fraction with the square root. If there is no fraction, if you just had one, let's say you had one plus i square root of six, you do need to write one plus square root of six i. Just be careful that that i is not inside the square root when you rewrite it this way, okay? Just trying to give you a heads up on how Alex is going to want to give, how Alex is going to want you to type in that answer, okay? So this cannot be typed in this way. It has to be typed in that way. Just be careful not to put the i inside the square root. Notice here it's not inside, so over here it should not be inside either. Okay, let's try another one of these problems, and then we'll move on to the um, last couple of topics. So, no starting point to find the zero, so we do our factors theorem. My apologies. On that, I have an alarm. Okay, let's see for this one. So, the factors of 5 is 1 and 5. Factors of 2 are 1 and 2, so our combinations are 1 over 1, 1 over 2, 5 over 1, which is 5, and then 5 over 2. So we'll set up just like we have been doing to find the first one. And normally I like to do the whole numbers first, but oh, I might as well keep them in order know if you're going to get a whole number or a fraction as one of these that work. So 1 store x and then program our function. So we get 21. Plug in negative 1. Plug in a half. Plug in a negative half. Oops. Ah, we get zero. So this is the one that works. So we're going to use negative one half out here. Two, positive three, positive 11, positive five. Bring down our two, we get negative one. Multiply, we get negative one. Multiply, we get negative five, and we get zero. And then here is our A, B, and C for the quadratic formula. Now, let me see here. I'm supposed to be getting, oh yes, I am gonna, that's a minus, not a plus, right? So I should not have gotten 44. Four minus 40 will give me a negative 36, which means this square root of 36 is six, but then with the negative, it'll be an I. So, that means we get negative 2 over 4 plus or minus 6i over 4, which is negative 1 halves plus or minus 3i over 2. But remember, they don't like it to be written like that, so we have to take the 3 halves first and then the i on the side. So we're supposed to have three answers here. We know negative 1 half is one of them, and the other two are coming from here. So negative 1 half plus... 3 halves i and negative 1 half minus 3 halves i. And those are our three um, solutions there. I'm going to stop this video and start another one.